I'll share my screen. See. Shall we wait for? Yeah, let's more? let's hold a little bit, shall we? Okay. Sorry, is the screen still up? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'll just leave this presentation up if okay with you guys. Sure. So I see Charlie Campbell there. He's one of the neighbors right next to the bridge. Hey, Charlie, nice. thanks for being here. Hey, thank you for all your Charlie, help. Which, which side are you on, Charlie? I don't know. I have any idea. I just uh, clicked on said no, he, click here. <laughs> he's located on the uh, Kohala Mountain side. Uh, oh. So the, he's right the, uh, next. Yeah, so he's uh, on the HPA the, side. Oh, got it. Steve, Steve uh, uses our driveway to get to his house. So <laughs> our driveway is very close to construction site. Got it. Yeah, so his driveway is right next to the staging area. Um, that's right, exactly. Yeah, and that's the driveway Steve used to get to his house. Yeah. So Ch Charlie, is it, is it your property that we're going to have our, our temporary temporary bypass on? Uh, I don't think it, it from your map. It looks like it just misses by a few yards. Oh, got it. <laughs> but I, but his neighbor uh, is. And, and is Steve, over, uh, is Steve joining us tonight, Charlie? Is he in town? Yes, yes, he is. He said I just talked to him a few minutes ago. He was going to click on. Yes. Okay. Good. Nice. Yep. We can hold for a bit. Okay, I so think we here. have more guests that have joined us. Welcome. Nice. Um, we are recording this session. We'll we'll get started in a couple of minutes. Going, we're going to try to allow some more time for some more community members to join. And Ed, just so you know, it's Steve Kittle who is right next door to Charles uh, to Charlie's place, and it's on Steve Kittle's property where uh, there's going to be a staging area. And Steve has uh, been. Uh, a real ally in the whole effort here. We really appreciate his Kokua and he's awesome. hopefully joining us tonight. Excellent, excellent. David, can you see my, my cursor? Is it is, um, Steve's property in this area here? Yes. Where the temporary bypass is? Got it. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay, great. I think we, so um, I see we have. James Hustis and Laura Karamatsu who have also joined us. Um, we are recording this session um, and we'll get started in a couple of minutes, trying to allow time for more um, community members to join. Appreciate James Hustis being here. He's the chair of our South Kohala Traffic Safety Committee and they just had a meeting about the project. And so uh, there he was, He's a real ally in getting the word out about the project. So I appreciate you being here, James. Thank you, Rep Tarnas. Appreciate that. So, James, how, how you been, man? Hello, Deputy Director. How are you? Very good. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having this meeting. Not at all. I'm excited to tell everybody it's real and it's going to go. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you.
I gotta apologize to everybody. Um, I'm doing this from home. So once my wife comes home, my dog's gonna go nuts. So <laughs> just just warning you now. <laughs> it's a great way to humanize you, Ed. You're a regular guy. <laughs> <laughs> So we're at 505. Did you want to get uh, did you want to wait a few more minutes or shall we get started? Steve, you want to reach out to Steve, see if he's he's going to jump on. It'd be really good for, for him to be on. Yeah, I know he was intending to be here, but I don't want to delay everybody. So, uh, you know, why don't you go ahead, Ed? Uh, and this is being recorded, so he'll be able to catch up, but hopefully he'll join us soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Shelley. Go ahead, please. OK. Um, Good after good evenings and welcome to our public information virtual public information meeting for the um, Kauai High Road replacement of Waiaka Bridge and realignment of the approaches. Um, I am putting in the chat a link to our voluntary title um, six survey. So if you would be so kind as to help us out by filling it out, that gives us more information on um, the segments of people that we are reaching in our public outreach and i'm going to turn the meeting over to our deputy director ed for highways ed sniffin but before i do i just want to remind everyone that we this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to our youtube um at the conclusion of the meeting um, if could every if everyone who is not speaking could so mute much. themselves, we have some um, general guidelines to help us run this meeting quickly and efficiently. So um, I will be facilitating. So if you do raise your hand, either um, in Teams or if you're on the phone by pressing star five, then um, I'll call on you when we have time for question and answer. Okay, now thank you, um, Deputy Director Sniffin. Thank you very much, Shelley. Really appreciate it, um, opening the meeting. Aloha, everyone. Ed Sniffin with the Department of Transportation. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Um, I'm so happy that we could do this virtually, so you can be um, do this in the comfort of your, of your own home or wherever you may be uh, to be a part of this meeting. Uh, before we start off, I want to make sure that I recognize a couple of our guests uh, tonight. Representative Tarnas, really appreciate all the work, all the support for these, this project and others. Um, in support of your community. Thanks so much for being on. Um, and Council Member Richards, really appreciate the same um, from the county side of the ball. Thanks so much for being on and thanks so much for supporting your community. Um, James Eustis, um, to you as well for spending all the time and effort that you do um, on the Sokohala Transportation um, uh, the Safety Committee. Really appreciate um, everything you do there. And that being said, really excited to talk about this project tonight, um, the Waka Stream Bridge Project. Um, this is the agenda for tonight, and, and just please keep in mind that this is this presentation is going to be posted online. Uh, this is going to be considered a leave behind, so it's going to be a lot more writing and uh, and information than than we're going to talk about and we're going to talk through. Um, so just bear with me on this. This is the agenda for tonight that we'll talk about. Um, you all know where the the project is. Um, it's the Waka Stream Bridge area um, at the intersection of of um, Kauai, uh, Kauai High Road and uh, Kuala Mountain Road. This bridge is 90 years old this year. Um, it's approaching the end of its service life, has to be replaced. That's the impetus of this project. But as with all of our projects, when we touch an area, we wanna make sure we upgrade that facility for the needs of the community today. This intersection served this purpose for a while, uh, but we wanna take a look at it and see how we can make it more efficient uh, and a lot safer as we're, as we're addressing the bridge. In this area, um, we want to make sure we improve the alignments, we improve the, the site distances, improve the safety overall, and improve the efficiency of this intersection while we replace this bridge. So although the bridge was the emphasis for this project, um, the major portion of this project is going to be this intersection improvement. Okay. <clears throat> the things that we're considering as part of this project, Definitely, the bridge got to be replaced and, and, and brought up this to today's standards to make sure we can take the loading and the geometries that are required by federal and state requirements. <clears throat> Definitely want to make sure that we improve the site distance on this bridge. We want to make sure that it's a lot safer for people to drive this area to see the potential hazards in front of them and, of course, be able to react to them. Uh, we want to make sure, as part of this in improvement to safety, uh, we want to make sure that it's um, this intersection is a lot more op operationally efficient as well. 
So we don't just want to replace the efficiency that we have right now. We want to make it better. Um, we see a lot of tourists um, or others that come through this area who don't know it as well as, as the residents may. We get a little, a little confused on which way to go. So we want to make it easier for them, uh, for them to nav navigate this intersection. And then, of course, we want to make it easier for people coming from Kuala Mountain Road to get on to Kauai High. That's all the considerations that we're making as part of this project. There's two build alternatives that we considered for this project. The first um, and, and the one that we prefer is the roundabout um, alternative. This roundabout alternative is going to be looking at um, acquiring about 0.2 acres on the northeast side of the intersection. Um, as part of this, um, this real landing. Do you guys still see the presentation? No, oh, Ed, we're seeing your um, your screen, your um, screen showing us. How's that? We're back. Okay, sorry about that. So on the southeast side, I mean, northeast side, we're looking at uh, taking about 2.2 acres, so a small portion um, into the neighboring properties. The neighbors, um, you know, really supportive of the project um, and is helping us not only with the acquisitions, but also um, the staging areas that the contractors will need as part of this project. Um, this roundabout alignment is the preferred because it's the safest and most efficient of the of the build alternatives that we considered. The second um, alternative that we considered is a T intersection. This T intersection will improve things from a safety and operational perspective over the existing alignment, but just not as well as the roundabout. So on a side by side, when we start looking at the studies we had done as part of preparing our environmental assessment for this, I'm sorry, uh, for this project, um, we looked at. Sorry, I think I lost it again. Do you want me to share my screen with the and pull up the presentation or? Let me try this again. Let me. Okay. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. If it, if I lose it again, Shelly, then you can pull yours. Okay. Okay. So. Of the studies we did, when we looked at this, this a comparison of the of the different build alignments were put, was put together, and you can see from an overall perspective, you look at the left column, the no build. Um, gives us these types of levels of, of service in the morning and in the afternoon. In general, ENF are breakdowns of the, of the system. The traffic signal or T intersection will improve things tremendously over the existing condition in, in both the morning and afternoon. The roundabout just does it better in all phases. So it's a lot more efficient from a, uh, from a operational perspective, and it's also a lot safer. When we look at the roundabouts, it eliminates those T-bone crashes that the uh, T-intersection could be subjected to. Um, it slows uh, people into the approaches to ensure that we minimize any um, the intensity of any crashes that may occur. Um, and it makes sure it calms that corridor um, outside, inside of the roundabout area and outside of it. We're not looking at slowing everybody down to a stop. We're just making sure that we can, we can calm everybody to the speed limit in this area. Um, the studies that we've done on the historic um, property assessment side, any structure over 50 years um, is already eligible for the register. So because of that, any touching of that, that existing structure um, is going to be considered an adverse effect, which means that we have to consult with um, SHIPD, the State Historic Preservation Department, to talk about what mitigations we would put in place to offset that, that impact. In some cases, it's building out the new structure to look like the old, um, in others, it's making sure that we preserve other bridges along the route that are considered um, similar to this. We still have to negotiate those impacts or those mitigations with um, ship D. On the uh, or, and of course, during um, construction, we're going to have archaeological monitoring to ensure that if we hit anything of historic uh, value, then uh, we'll know sooner rather than later. On the cultural impacts side, um, we didn't see any um, adverse effects. But we're making sure that the contractor understands there is concerns that there could be potentially um, historic artifacts in this area, and we're making sure that everybody understands that while we went to construction. And on our biological side, <clears throat> right now we're, we're not looking at threatening any endangered species um, or threatened species in this area, so we're, we're good in that concern. But we're making sure that we put in measures to minimize any impacts that could happen in the, um, for this portion. So during construction, um, as with any project, there's going to be impacts to the public. 
we're going to try to minimize them as much as possible. When we reconstruct that bridge, um, we're going to be putting in a, a temporary detour that goes on the northern side of the alignment to ensure that we don't have to shut down um, significant lane portions during significant or during the times of construction. We'll minimize that as much as possible. But definitely, as we get into the roundabout, we're going to have to phase it to ensure we provide the access to the area while providing the contractor with uh, construction spacing as well. So we're, make, we're going to make sure that we set up our traffic controls to minimize impacts to you. But this is good. This work is going to be done during the day. When we looked at this project and its vicinity or its proximity to the existing residences, um, the, the restrictions we have on uh, at night for night construction because it'll already bat. Um, daytime is the is the best time for us to do this work. So we'll have to sit, set up our traffic control to minimize any impacts to you uh, during construction. Um, we're definitely going to be taking um, steps with the contractor to minimize um, noise levels during construction and minimize any dust impacts to the neighboring communities. For us, we're, the time frame we're looking at is getting this project bid out by spring of this year. We want to put it on the street for contractors to bid on by spring of 2023. <clears throat> when we do that, it's going to be about six months uh, for the for the contractors or for us to get through that bid and and the award process. Then from there, it's going to be an 18 month schedule. So we're looking at um, at making sure that we move forward very quickly on this project. And to do so, we're setting up a time frame uh, for us to receive comments uh, by April 23rd, so we can get through this draft environmental assessment and get to the final, um, the posting of the final in the summer of 2022. That's the schedule we're looking at for this project. Um, the project is going to be about $15 million to take care of the bridge reconstruction and that um, intersection improvement. That's all I have to present on this. Um, I can go back to any slide that anybody wants, but I'd love to answer any questions, uh, take any comments, or see if any concerns from the community so we can start um, adding this into our environmental assessments and in, into our project improvements. So again, if anyone has any questions or comments, please raise your hand and we'll um, take them in the order in which they're received. Okay, Rep Tarnas, um, please go ahead and unmute. And then um, following that, Mr. Cattell. Thank you very much. Um, I know I just want to make sure that the neighbors like Steve Kittle and uh, Charlie Campbell and HPA that, you know, they are uh, being closely consulted with uh, as we go through this because they will be most directly impacted. And it's through their COCUA that we can have the staging area and temporary bridge uh, to be able to, uh, you know, continue to use the road during construction. And it's not just vehicles, as you know, it's not just cars and trucks. It's also bicycles and pedestrians and such. So so uh, if you could talk to us about how you're engaging with the neighbors there and how you'll accommodate multimodal transport during construction, that'd be great. Thank you. Absolutely. And for the for the um, coordination with the community, Steve, really appreciate all the help on this project and allowing us to um, the consideration of um, looking at construction parcels on your on your property. Um, I'm going to ask Darren and Henry our, on our project team to talk about how we're coordinating uh, with the community on this, especially the neighboring properties. Darren. Hey, thanks, Ed. Hey, as we go through further on the design and we start, um, you know, really pinning down the locations of the temporary bypass road, staging areas, et cetera, that's when we'll be reaching out to the affected um, property owners, let them know what's going to be going on, schedule for what we need to be doing as far as construction parcels or in the case of HPA for right away take and everything. So uh, we're working to pin down those design details now so we can kind of lock in the, the land requirements on both construction parcel side and right away take side. Um, staging area, we're looking to just keep it within the the highway right away. There's an additional state parcel a little further east down Kauai High Road that we're also looking at. I think it's a DLNR parcel we determined. So um, for staging areas, that's what we're looking at. So uh, between right away take and construction parcel, those are the ones we'll be working with the affected property owners. Yep. And during construction, uh, Rep Tarnas, 
we're going to provide access to all modes of transportation, not just vehicles, but bikes and pedestrians as well. So all of our temporary accesses and our construction sequencing will, will allow for all accesses for all users. And I believe Mr. Um, Kittle, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name, um, is, is had a question next. Um, please go ahead and unmute yourself, or if you need to, I can unmute you. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm having a little trouble with my camera. It's doing the uh, picture of my house instead of me, but anyway. Um, Beautiful, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, but anyway, um, first off, uh, Ed, uh, thank you very much. I. I have read this extensively um, and both myself and the Campbells that um, David Tarnas uh, recommend, uh, you know, mentioned. We are in favor, very much in favor of the roundabout. So thank you very much for that. Um, you know, it is true that no one, I just want to go on record that no one has contacted me about oh. specifics of uh, the taking of any portion of my land or um you know for this use i do not object to that however i have made it very clear both in writing to andy hirano twice that um, i expect someone to come out and stake it for me so i can see exactly what is being talked about because as i understand in one discussion i had with andy hirano i don't know a month or two ago it's not exactly what's drawn on the um, on the drawing. There's an additional 15 feet uh, that is a shoulder. And um, so, you know, at the moment, I uh, just want to go on record that I have not approved anything. I do not object to this project in any way. However, I will not be approving anything until somebody does me the courtesy of coming out and talking to me on the property and having it staked exactly what is being discussed. Uh, the other thing, um, Ed, is I'm very, very happy to hear that there is not going to be any night construction, which I just heard you say, because in this draft, it does talk about night construction, and night construction for those of us who live immediately in this area would be extremely disruptive, not just noise-wise, but also lights. And so I'm very happy and I uh, hope this is recorded that uh, there will not be night construction. Yeah, it is recorded loud and clear. OK, so but anyway, I'm I'm looking forward to somebody contacting me sometime um, about uh, exactly what's you know what on my property, what is going to happen. And I will welcome them to come and show me. And I will not be unreasonable about this in any way. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, our staff are going to contact you, and you're, they're going to meet you out there next week. Uh, if, it, I'm sorry, if it works for next, you, next week will not work for me. Huh. I am not available until um, now. At this point, I will not be available until after May first. After May first, got it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ed. Mr. Campbell, I noticed you unmuted. Did you have anything to add? Uh, no, I, I agree with everything that uh, Steve said. I know that uh, the work will impact our driveway somewhat for as far as traffic in and out, but uh, we're uh, amenable to anything that can be worked out with the state and county. We really are looking forward to a roundabout. It'll keep the traffic flowing through our atherosclerotic highway system through our town. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thanks sir. You. Any other comments or questions? Would anyone like to see? Oh, I see um, James Hustis has, uh, has raised his hand. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate you holding this public meeting. Um, as was mentioned by Rep Tarnas and yourself, Deputy Director Sniffen, we've been talking about this for a while, especially in the South Quality Traffic Safety Committee. 
the question I had was really uh, not necessarily. Um, it's more for the private private entity of Hawaii Preparatory Academy. They, you know, as as a resident of the Waimea, it's it's plain and clear that you can see that they have, uh, you know, critical infrastructure on the corner of their property there, that abuts uh, the yeah, intersection. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious if um, conversations with HPA has been amenable in moving and relocating those infrastructures and, and sort of conversations about that um, and how that could be handled. I don't know if it, you know, hopefully something could be could be done there, especially with a roundabout taking the right of way and that, that extra space that's needed from the corner of their parcel there. Thank you. Darren, Darren have you had conversations with HPA with the, with the school? Not yet. Uh, we'll have some initial talks just to know that, I mean, regardless, there there will be right away take where it exactly will be, um, you know, to literally to stake it out and everything that's still to be determined. Uh, there's a bunch of electrical facilities in that area that would require mm. relocation. That, that's on, uh, you know, that's understood as part of our project to be uh, within our uh, construction scope of work. So, th yeah, those the, the contact with HPA is forthcoming. I, I did have some conversations with um, major major Hawaii prep and they also offered uh, an emergency bypass road through their property in case um, there is uh, a need for for such. Perfect, so we had preliminary discussions with them. We're going to have to finalize them. Is that what I'm here? It was an email, just an email. So, Andy okay. or Darren? Andy, Did I know you, you had Ed's some question. You know, you had some email uh, contact, right, with HPA? Yes. Okay. And they're aware of the project and had yeah. offered uh, an emergency bypass um, if there is an, uh, a over. shutdown yeah. for whatever reason. Perfect. So James, yes, uh, the preliminary they, contact's they, been made. They knew we'll I finalize was on, those, the approaches with them lights up. And, could, yeah. and finalize it. OK, um, and I, I'm sorry, Mr. Campbell, I, I had to mute you, um, but Rep Tarnas has his hand up. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I heard from some constituents that were concerned that a roundabout would not be able to accommodate all of the trucks that bringing mats and containers from Kauai High Port uh, as they drive up Kauai High Road into town. Could you talk to us about that? Because that, there are, you know, a lot of trucks that are carrying, you know, uh, you know, that are bringing up containers. And will the roundabout be able to accommodate those large trucks? Yes, really good question, uh, Rep Tarnas. The roundabout is being designed for WB63, I think it is, um, Darren? 67. 67. 67. So it's the standard that we're designing to. Uh, that takes care of all of the types of vehicles that we have in Hawaii. Uh, so it'll take all the trucks that are running on the on the road right now. And actually, the 67 is a little bit longer than the trucks we actually have in Hawaii. So it's the standard side. It'll, it'll take all the trucks that are running through at this time. Thank you. That'll be really important to explain to folks because I've heard from a couple constituents saying they're so skeptical about the roundabout being uh, feasible because of the trucks. So if, if you could include that in your descriptions, that would be helpful. Thank you. Absolutely, we'll do. Thanks. Hey, are there any other questions? Mr. Hustis? Oh, thank you. Thanks again. Um, I know the it's really just a preliminary design of both the roundabout and the T intersection that signalize, uh, but and we've had conversations with Mr. Hirano in our traffic safety meetings as well. And this is always a concern that comes up about uh, multimodal use of the area and making sure that we can accommodate with the roundabout or the T intersection, those other users of the road and make sure that they're considered whether they're on bicycles or our pedestrians. I mean, we currently do have a really old footbridge, uh, footpath on the bridge uh, as it stands. Um, and I think we just wanna make sure that we have that as part of the overall design too, and that those all those users feel safe in that in that vicinity. 
Thank so you. all of our facilities, anytime we touch them, we upgrade them for everybody. So it's going to be for bike, vehicles, bikes, bicyclists, and pedestrians, and in this area for equestrians as well, um, because we know that it's coming through. So the design is going to accommodate all of those those features. I'm not sure we're going to be designing another footbridge with it, but it's going to be an expanded uh, structure to ensure that we accommodate everybody. But Darren, can you talk a little bit more about that? No, that's correct. I mean, we're we're, we're providing uh, the bridge structure with enough widths for shoulders and pedestrian walkways. And yeah, we understand that we even have to take into consider equestrian traffic too. How that ties in on all sides with that's all going to be part of the design. Thank you. Council member Richards has his hand up. Yeah, thank you. And um, thanks, Ed, for touching on the horses, because that's something, again, Waimea area. Uh, the same concerns we have as we're putting in these connector roads and all that. So I appreciate you recognizing that. And also just want to say to the community living in that area, being so receptive of the project and willing to work with the, the state and the county to get this thing done. So I just want to say thank you to the constituents. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, really appreciate you pointing that out. Rep Tarnas, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Shelley. Uh, just something else to uh, um, highlight uh, is, and that is, um, you know, folks are during construction, uh, if you could please pay attention to signage, uh, especially, you know, cyclists are gonna feel very vulnerable. And there's a lot of cyclists that use that daily for commuting. Um, there's some pedestrians as well, certainly, but cyclists are, there's quite a few of them. Uh, and so signage, you know, trying to get people to slow down, any kind of traffic calming uh, would be really helpful. Um, we, as you know, I mean, you had a, uh, for a while there, you were tracking to see what uh, the speed was on the people who drive through there. And they're, you know, they're, they, seems to be most of them are speeding uh it's supposed to be 25 miles an hour but they're going 35 mph and more so anything you can do to calm traffic signage flashing lights something just to keep the people driving more slowly and and make sure that the the drivers some of us are older and we're slower and there's cyclists that need to be safe so uh you know just i know you have that in mind but you know please uh, consider that as you uh, during construction, uh, certainly, and then of course in the final product. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate you pointing that out. And I gotta say that uh, we've learned a lot of lessons in construction uh, from our time. Our standards were vehicle centric, especially in construction, where we would uh, we would allow a two inch gap or a two inch separation between the elevation of one lane through the other if we're paving an area. Easy for a vehicle to go over those types of areas. Very difficult for cyclists. So we've been changing our construction requirements, make sure we ramp things, we make sure we um, we take all of their users in mind when we're building it out, especially in the signage. Um, and especially during times when we ha we don't have construction in that construction zone, but the lanes are still restricted. So we'll make sure that we, we take that into account uh, through all phases of this project, um, both when we're working it and when we're not, when we have restrictions in those areas. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, you already mentioned about talking to Hawaii Preparatory Academy. You know, they're not only the landowner that you need to get some right away acquisition from, but they're also our major uh, source of uh, the traffic, you know, with the kids uh, being dropped off at school and picked up at school, major athletic events, you name it. Um, and so please close consultation with them would be very important. Um, the neighborhoods right next door, uh, I know I see a number of folks from the Waiaka neighborhood uh, that are there um, uh, at our meeting uh, today that are joining us. And we're all supportive of the project. I live in Waiaka neighborhood too. And so, you know, we, we wanna make sure that we're able to be uh, safe coming out of our neighborhood to get onto Kwai High Road um and uh so you know we're supportive of the project we just just want to make sure you pay attention to all the neighbors and it sounds like you're doing that so thank you thank you okay, before we go on to more questions i'm going to put again the link to our 
voluntary Title VI survey. So if you could, that really helps us figure out um, what populations we're reaching and if we need to revamp our, any of our public involvement processes. Any other questions at this time? Okay, Mr. Hustis, please go ahead. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It it really I know it's kind of early in the design of it, but I'm kind of curious uh, what the noise barriers would look like um, that are being proposed, as well as um, if you're going with the roundabout uh, solution, what would the inner part um, amongst the apron look like the truck apron? So what is the would you maintain sight distance and keeping that kind of low vegetation there in the middle? Thank you. So I'll, I'll ask Andy to jump in on, on this one, but I will say in general for roundabouts, you don't want that middle to be flat. Um, if it's an area, it looks like you could drive over, people drive over it. So in typically we would put in some kind of structure or some kind of elevated piece in there to ensure that everybody knows, everybody sees visually, you got to go around it. Um, that being said, we haven't had, we don't have anything planned in the set, in the center of it at this time. Um, on Kauai for Kapa'a roundabout, we put in uh, a stone, um, you know, a stacked rock wall, a dry, dry stacked rock wall kind of thing. Um, Mayor Derek is doing one right now in Kauai. He's going to put two shaka, two shakas in it in the middle. No, I'm not. I'm not going to recommend that for that for this community. I think we can work with you guys to see what might look best um, in that in that um, interior portion. But I don't think we can have a flat area in there just from a safety perspective. Andy, can you jump in to help out with the question for the the, the noise balls? I'll leave it to, to Darren to uh, address. We evaluated a couple of types of noise walls, so probably, we're probably going to lean more towards a CMU block type of noise wall that uh, matches generally what's out there now. Um, it was between uh, CRM rock walls or or CMU tile walls. Uh, that's it's to be determined during design, cost effectiveness, et cetera. Hey, Darren, can you um, say what C CMU or... Um... The, CMU or the tile block cement masonry unit, CMU, okay. tie it like a tile block wall. Um, Thank you. CRM is the cement rubble, concrete rubble masonry, basically rock wall. Okay. Thank, okay, Rep Tarnas. Please go ahead. Yeah, just something else to bring up. Um, you know, in years past, we've had high uh, um, significant storm events that uh, have caused the stream to uh, the stream level to rise uh, right up to the bridge itself. Um, and so as you design the new bridge, uh, you know, pay attention, if you would, please, to the uh, likelihood eventual uh, flooding uh, events that will occur um, you know you, you know of course with climate change we're getting some heavier storm events and these are flashy streams uh, and so they will rise very quickly um, and uh, so uh, just if you keep that in mind as you design your bridge uh, so that it can accommodate those very high flood levels thank you absolutely thanks rep Tarnas. When we design our structures, we always upgrade the hydraulic opening uh, to, for the anticipated impacts in the future. Very difficult now to anticipate what that what those impacts are. Um, our standards are to design for the 100-year storm, but I think we had 300-year storms in the last five years. So we're always trying to consider uh, whether our standards are substandard to ensure that when we build these systems, they're a lot more resilient than they are today. So definitely, we'll, we'll take that in mind um, and we'll make sure that we design appropriately. And Mr. Kittle, um, please go ahead. Uh, yes, um, actually, you are right the first time. It is Kittel. But anyway, um, I did see the new bridge uh, design, and that looks great. I would just like to add, as far as the design of the uh, for the waterway, um, I would just like to add as the person that is the closest and most likely to flood. Um, that during the, the uh, construction, 
I hope that that will be taken into consideration that no materials, no, uh, no uh, trees or anything that have to be cut or anything is left in that bed because, um, you know, I, I have been here for those five, those last 300 year floods um, in the last five years. Um, and they can be quite high. And, um, you know, so please during construction, I would like to be sure that whoever the contractor commits to not just piling stuff up and leaving it in the stream bed. Thank you. Absolutely, we'll do. Um, it would be against our permits for us to do so. Uh, we have to make sure we keep that area clear, but we'll make sure that the, the contractor understands that. And uh, I'd like to add, we also have um, procedures. So when there is a flood warning or watch, um, we do make notifications to contractors to remove their best management practices to ensure that water can um, flow freely. We do have a comment in the chat from, I'm sorry, Dr. Campbell. Uh, then his comment is, we have lived at Wayaka Bridge site since 1968 and have seen the river go over that bridge twice. And if I I'm may, sorry. Shelley, oh, yes. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I know that Steve uh, Cattell hasn't mentioned it, but when you go on site with them, pay attention to a very large hedge that he's got that, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a legacy hedge. I don't know how long it's been there, Steve, but a long, long time. And it's very tall, very mature. So when you go on site, that's among the things that you need to talk with him about. Right, Steve? Uh, yes, David, that is correct. And um, I just met with somebody who relocated um, some legacy trees, lots of them, hundreds of them down at Kona Village. So it can definitely be done. I have said that I don't want those trees just put in as, you know, two gallon little trees again. They're at least 50 or 60 years old. So um, yes, that is something that I would talk about that with them on site. Thank you, David, for remembering that. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, thank you. Any um, any additional questions? OK, going once, going twice. Um, Ed, shall we close out the meeting? Yes, we can close it out. And um, so I'm real quick, everybody. real quick, oh, Ed, yeah. before you jump in and wrap up, as you go forward and you need to reach out to the community, uh, let me just say that between the South Kohala Traffic Safety Committee and the Waimea Community Association, those two organizations really are able to reach out uh, into the community, uh, Hawaiian Homesteaders Association as well. Um, you have the list and if uh, people who have signed up to part to get notified, I would encourage people who are on this call uh, to make sure that you give your contact information to uh, DOT Highways so that you can be on the list for being notified uh, about the project as it goes forward. Communication really helps make sure there's no misunderstandings uh, and uh, no pilakia uh, with things. So I would just encourage that um, so that we can inform the community uh, and thank you, Shelley, for uh, posting uh, the subscriber uh, link so that you can make sure that you get on the list. Um, and I encourage everyone to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then again, so at the conclusion, this meeting um, will be posted to our presentations page, both the recording and the presentation itself. And I posted the link to that in the chat as well. Awesome. With that, if there's no other questions, thank you very much, all of you, for jumping on um, and for supporting this project. Definitely want to hear from you more um, during this process, the environmental process, and during the project delivery process to ensure that we can build this as the, the best project as we can. Um, there's still a lot of things in the design that are up in the air um, that we'd love the, the community feedback on. So, um, Rep. Tarnas, Councilmember uh, Richards, um, and Senator Inouye sent her regrets that she couldn't be here. But we're going to reach out through the legislators first and then through the South Kahala Transportation Committee just to make sure 
um, that we can get everybody um, feed in as, as much as possible. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always write directly into DOT as well. Um, so happy to have the conversation on, on how we can make this better as we move forward. Thank you very much, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Aloha, okay. Ed. Thank you very much, Shelly, uh, Darren, your whole team. I appreciate uh, your efforts. Look forward to a Thank successful you. project. Definitely. Take care. Aloha. See you all soon. Aloha.